Testosterone. Testosterone, it is the cornerstone of being male. It affects everyone, but it affects your life in ways you probably never knew. Testosterone is a hormone that increases libido, produces masculine traits, builds muscle, decreases fat, and is required to produce sperm, as well as sexual arousal in both men and women. These are positive traits everyone knows about it. The more negative traits include immune system suppression, which is one of the main reasons why men live 5 to 10 years shorter than women. It also has an impact on one's emotions. Aside from increased aggressiveness, too much of it can make you stupid. John Coates, a Wall Street trader who became a neurologist, showed the study where good trades made young male traders more testosterone. This made them make more and more risky trades as each one began getting a dopamine rush and a god complex off their success. Testosterone at a certain point makes you stupid because of all the dopamine and your risk gets too great and you crash losing everything. Your confidence is high to the point of retardedness. If you have too many of these people in the stock market, and things are going well, the entire market will crash unless there is structure set in place to prevent it. Testosterone is essential for attracting a mate. Having sex appeal is required. Assuming I was not going to have sex until I was married, I reduced both my testosterone and my sex appeal. I tried to project nothing sexual about me to be pure for my religion. You will appear bland and boring when it comes to anything beyond a friend level. There is nothing exciting about you, and unless you have a lot more in common, don't expect anything to come about of it beyond the friend zone. Confidence and testosterone are linked. When you have high confidence, you have high testosterone, as was shown in the Wall Street Trader study. Most young people who try and harness the power of testosterone to attract a mate do so without understanding it at all. If you have too little, you have low self-confidence and sex appeal. If you have too much of it though, while you have great sex appeal and confidence, you can also become a cocky idiot. Learning how to find this balance is insanely difficult for a younger person, which is why there is usually the stereotype of the wimpy geeks with low testosterone who has no chance with the ladies and the dumb jocks who is an aggressive jerk but has all the chicks. The teen years are like having free access to drugs, but without knowing or understanding what sets them off and how it affects you. Testosterone is something that can also destroy oxytocin. Men with high levels of testosterone were found to be more greedy, but at the same time more self-righteously adamant in using their own money to punish others who are greedy. It sadly has an evolutionary advantage in young men for the purpose of acquiring wealth and therefore a mate. Most young men have realized that guys who are jerks get more women. Muscle mass requires testosterone to build at high levels as well. The major reason that jerks get more women is the testosterone levels. They are more attractive to women. They have an air of confidence even if deep down they aren't confident. It is the testosterone talking. Aggression and testosterone are linked as well. Oddly, it is increased aggression that causes increased testosterone, not really the other way around. It's why women are attracted to the jerks over the nice guys at younger ages. It's a way to get a quick boost of testosterone if you don't genetically have higher levels. Having lower levels at a young age sucks, but you live much longer because your body puts you on a slow drip feed as opposed to a hormone dump. Of course, testosterone also does affect aggressiveness. If you castrate someone, their testosterone drops and their aggressiveness drops to zero. If you restore them to normal levels, even on the lowest level of normal male testosterone, their aggressiveness returns. Give them twice the dosage and the same level of aggression exists. If you raise the level of testosterone in a non-aggressive person though, their aggressiveness doesn't increase. Their confidence may, but not aggressiveness. Testosterone is aggressive permissive, meaning it doesn't cause you to be aggressive, but if you are psychologically aggressive by nature, it allows you to be so. It requires someone to be given completely unnatural levels of testosterone before their aggression becomes exaggerated. 
Beating up on the weak and rising to the top of the hierarchy in monkeys has been shown to reduce or the stress hormone, which is a major killer of testosterone. It's a quick fix and it ensures propagation, but it is hardly altruistic. Bullies will be part of our society for quite some time. Testosterone will continue to be very attractive to most straight women, even if it is in the lower doses that the muscle head jocks display. Aggression is in the mind. It is more of an ability to cope with stress and testosterone than caused by them. Robert Sapolsky discussed an experiment in his essay Trouble with Testosterone where you take five monkeys and let them form a hierarchy. Take monkey number three and pump him full of unnatural levels of testosterone. His aggression ramps up, but oddly that doesn't move him up to top monkey. He is still subordinate to the top two monkeys, but abuses the bottom two monkeys even more so to vent his stress and rage. Anyone who attended high school, at least in the US, knows how this works. Bullies will toady to the people they see as top dog, but bully anyone they believe is underneath them. The amygdala is the seat of aggression. It will be aggressive if it's not trained properly or it is damaged by emotional abuse and has even a low level of testosterone. The need to be aggressive is a sign of stress which tells the body, screw long life, you need to get to baby making quick. Testosterone actually increases over your lifetime, so if you're in your teens or 20s and are having trouble with the ladies, if you keep working at it, you will eventually reach a point when you have both sufficient levels of testosterone and you'll be able to control it so that it doesn't make you too stupid. Many awkward younger males who aren't the stereotypical jocks will try to show confidence, but since they have no tolerance to testosterone, like a new drinker has no tolerance to alcohol, the effects of testosterone are much more overwhelming and they act stupid faster. This will many times embarrass them and they will be discouraged to even try to have confidence again. Sadly, it takes that failure to raise your tolerance to testosterone. However, one of the major advantages is at about 30, you look a lot younger than someone who had high testosterone.